All right. Now, it's very important that I'm very gentle with him because you can see how flattened out he is. When they flatten out like that, that's like a cobra. And he's saying, look how big I am. I'm a venomous snake. Careful. Try and get in and get his tail. Back here, mate. Hey. Keeps covering his tail up nicely. Very hard to get them when they're like that. Oh. You're a grumpy snake. He's a little bit cranky. Now, why... Wow, too close. That was too close. Nearly picked me up on the nose. Getting bitten on the face is really hard because you can't get a pressure bandage on it. This snake is particularly aggressive. The reason being is I've got him cornered. He feels confronted. He thinks I'm going to hurt him, perhaps even eat him. His only, his only form of defence is aggression, to retaliate. And it's very important that I get him by the tail, otherwise I'm not able to manipulate him. And what happens is every time I try to get him by the tail, he swings at me. That's it. Right. I'm getting as tired of him as he is of me. Poor little blighter. He only wanted to get back into the reeds. And I only want to get onto snake number six. We go east for that. If I can ever get out of here. For snake number six, Steve's at the Great Barrier Reef, looking for a beaked sea snake. The beaked is the most venomous sea snake of all. Sea snakes need this concentrated venom to catch fish, which are very slippery prey. The venom is an excellent defense, too, and so is hiding in the coral, which is why Steve can't find any now. Well, he's found one, but not the beaked one. It's an olive sea snake, using its light-sensitive tail to detect shadows of large creatures, such as Steve, swimming up from behind. Then it can go find somewhere better to hide. Here's an olive snake that seems friendly, that, or it's saying hello to its reflection in Steve's goggles, flicking its tongue through a special watertight valve to try and find out what this thing might be. Because Steve doesn't taste like another sea snake, the animal loses interest and swims off. Sea snakes, being snakes, breathe air, but one lungful lasts several hours. Longer, for instance, than Steve's scuba tanks last. On his way back to the boat to dump them, he sees what might be the snake he's after. It looks like a beaked one, and so he swaps his tanks for a snorkel and goes to check. But no, it's a Stokes sea snake. A close relative of the beaked, and maybe close enough to count. This is a big one, too. Longer than Steve, and capable of swimming circles around him. Glorious sea snake. Absolutely glorious. They've got some incredible body structure. You can see how their belly scales have come down 
and divided to make a keel to aid in swimming. Cute head. And they feel just like a snake, not slimy like an eel or a fish. And if we have a look down at the tail, you can see it's very flattened, almost paddle-like. And this propels them through the water quite quickly, and they can even go in reverse. You can see, like all sea snakes, they aren't aggressive. They breathe air, just like we do. So bringing her to the surface is no harm. She's quite placid. And take a look at those nostrils. See how she opens and closes them? Let's just let her go and see what she does. Well, no big sea snake, but no worries. We saw plenty of others. Time to move on. Number five, and for this one, Steve's still at sea, heading for Reevesby Island off South Australia. This time he's after yet another kind of tiger snake, just that much deadlier than the others he's found. When Steve steps onto this island, he will become its entire human population. There's plenty of wildlife here, though, including lots and lots of deadly snakes. The weather changes on this island are quite rapid. One minute it's sunny, next minute it's cloudy. But I actually think that this cloud cover is going to work for me. Perhaps there'll be a few tigers out. The term cold-blooded isn't entirely accurate. What it means is that you're more or less the same temperature as everything else around you. If you're cold, you go out into the sun and you get hot. If you get too hot, you go to someplace cool. A cloudy day here is just about right for snakes to be out and active without boiling over. Whoa, what a little ripper. Have a look at this one, isn't she gorgeous? Now I can tell this is a female and she's in really good condition. Now, she's also gravid, which is a pregnant state in a snake. You can see she's got a lump that starts about here and goes all the way up her tummy. And she's gorgeous, very placid. Have a look on her body underneath the scales. Those little jiggers there, they're ticks. They're an external parasite, and they feed on blood in the snake. A lot of Australian animals carry ticks, and they don't present too much of a problem. She's so gorgeous, and given that she's pregnant, I'll just let her go. There you go, sweetheart. For snake number four, the landscape changes from desert island to the lush forests of the Great Dividing Range. But the target snakes in both places are closely related. They're each a kind of tiger snake. Steve drives up into a forest that contains some of the largest trees in Australia to find the deadliest tiger of all. While the problem for the Reevesby Island tiger snake is getting out of the sun, an eastern tiger snake up here in the shade has to find some sun, which means finding openings in the canopy. Since these are easiest to find along streams and rivers, that's where Steve starts looking. What a great example of how a snake, if unmolested and left alone, is quick to get out of your way, not stand and strike. Here's one here. Unreal. That's the most amount of tiger snakes I've ever seen in one place at one time in my life. 